Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people, teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. Hey, Shalom Israel, Most High in Christ, bless Bishop Nathaniel here. Welcome back to Babylon. Welcome back. Oh, God. I'm a little under the weather. I got back from Nigeria as soon as I landed here back in Babylon. The weather was a stark difference. The body just shook, shuddered, and almost shut down. I got a cold. <clears throat> just bear with me. Uh, listen, I do want to say this before I get to the shout outs, because you know what day it is. That's right. How can I forget that? It's shout out Tuesday. That's right. It's shout out Tuesday. Now, thanking you brothers and sisters for the, the generous donations that you've been given, no matter how small or how great we at Israel United in Christ are very appreciative because like I always say, we could not do this work without your continued support. All praises to the most high who has shown us favor. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to show you all a video. I want y'all to understand what time we're in. This is wartime. Second Corinthians chapter 10, it reads, uh, I'll start at three, actually. Second Corinthians 10 verse three, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. To war after the flesh means to ha uh, uh, gather knives and guns, weapons like that to go to a physical war. No, no, no. This is not that type of war. Verse four, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, not of man, not sinful, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Let me give you an example. One stronghold that's throughout the earth is the white, the Caucasian image of Jesus. That's a stronghold in our peoples. My guess what? Even in Nigeria. Listen, let me tell you something about Nigeria. Out of, of the various tribes we met, you all, the Ebos were the ones that always jump up and say, we know we're Israelites. Then we ask them, what color is Christ? You know what they say? White. Why? Are you kidding me? Then they go, we know, we Ebo, we have continued to tradition knowing that we're Israel. Oh, really? So who did Messiah come from? All nations, everybody. He doesn't discriminate. What I want you to see is that even the Ebo, which comes from the word Eber, uh, they are under the delusion of white man magic. They too are lost. So I remember saying to a couple of them, I said, well, if you were so, if you so held on to your traditions that we are the Israelites, why did many of your brothers and sisters go into slavery here in America? Why are you colonized today? Why do you, why are you suffering poverty? Huh? You know, it, it, you just got to laugh to yourself because they, they love to say that to exalt themselves above the rest of the people. But let me tell you something. We're not going by your oral tradition. Let me word it like this. God is not going by your oral traditions. God is going by the Holy Bible. That's right. I said it by the Holy Bible. One brother, I, forget, I always forget his name. He attacked us the first day. You know, he stayed on the side of the Kel, something, the idiot guy. We were his mortal enemy. And when I spoke to the brother, I said, brother, Calm down. I said, you got an angry spirit. And if you are of God, this conversation would be peaceful. But he was like, no, no, ah! like, like he was on drugs. So I said, bruh. So I'm like, bruh, you mean to tell me that the, 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 the people of God is nowhere in South America, Central or South America? He's like, no, no, not, no, no. I said, so how about this? I want all you to listen good to this. They sent, for example, 0.2 million slaves throughout Mexico, 0.5 million throughout Brazil, 
Uh, no, actually, I think Brazil was like five point something million to Brazil. Uh, they sent slaves to uh, Puerto Rico, Santo Domingo, Honduras, Chile, so forth and so on. So you mean to tell me, back in the 60s, not one so-called Indian that was already there slept with one of the descendants of the Ebos or Yoruba? Not one. And they have no descendants. Are you insane? This is why a lot of you are just stupid. Just be quiet. If you don't think we as a people uh, dealt with the other nations, you better read the story of Samson. I remember this one guy said, no, no Hausa, no Fulani is an Israelite. So you mean to tell me, out of all these centuries, not one Ebo or what Yoruba ever laid down with a Hausa? You better read the story of Judges with Samson. Remember, he loved the Philistine women. He loved the Hamite women. They was good looking to him. So you don't know what you're talking about. And for you brothers and sisters that listen to that stupid rhetoric, shame on you. I can't help you. There's nothing we can do for you. So now, 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4 reads, For the weapons of our warfare. That's right, we're at war, brothers and sisters. War. And this is how you know an idiot. We're at war for the liberation of our 12 tribes. You know what a Negro who was under the, the, the white man magic? He looks at us. I'm going to give an example. I'll give an example with the Igbo since I just came from Nigeria. They'll hear us teach and go, y'all are our enemies. You're, you're, you're like that one idiot. You're the enemy. You're the enemy. Meanwhile, the white man has colonized them, put false images of Jesus throughout their land, okay? Destroyed them, impoverished them. But we, the men and women who look like them, we're the enemy? Are you kidding me? We're teaching that we're Israel and we're the enemy. That's like here in America. You got these dummies, these dumb Israelite camps. Y'all know who they are. You got the great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns coming down attacking us. And here goes the camp. Hit the, they, the dragon's right there. And they go, oh, are you, are you, I see. You're our enemies. Let's go stab them. Let's attack them. Let's slander them. You can't make this stuff up. When it comes to stupidity, there's nothing worse than a Negro. Okay, uh, 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 other than you uh, you Latinos that gave us up. I don't even think you're Latino. You know you're a wigger that ran to SPLC. The dear hate group, meanwhile, we paid your rent every other month. Anyway, that's enough for that. But what I want you to see, we are at war. And this is the proof that we're at war. Trinity Broadcast Network is putting out videos trying to portray themselves as the people of Christ. Why? Because the true gospel is hitting home. It's hitting them. It's hitting them. It's hitting them. I'm going to show the video right now. You know, the most famous painting of Jesus that has ever been painted is Leonardo da Vinci's picture of the Last Supper. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you think that Leonardo da Vinci's portrait of Jesus, which is the most well-known, iconic picture of Jesus in the world, is an accurate representation of who Jesus is? Do you think Jesus had blonde or red hair? His face in this picture, you know, looks not only with blonde or red hair, but his face looks kind of effeminate. Notice there's no beard on him. It looks like he's wearing almost like a dress. Do you think that's an accurate picture of what Yeshua HaMashiach, Yeshua of Nazareth looked like? Beloved, he was a Jew. Do you think he looked more like Leonardo da Vinci's portrait of Jesus or more like me? Beloved, he looked a lot more like me. For example, you'll notice today that I'm wearing what are called the payas or side curls. This comes from the book of Leviticus or Vayikra in Hebrew, chapter 19, verse 27, where the Lord told the children of Israel not to cut the side growth or the side locks of their hair. Why? Because he wanted them to look different than the world around them. Because they were called to be a nation of priests. They were called to be his in the world, to stand out in the world as his representatives. It marked them as different. And because this desire has been burning in me, I have stepped out in faith to do the same thing. To make a statement, Father God, I belong to you. I'm your representative in the world. I'm not of the world. I should look different because we're not of the world. I hope that you'll receive this, beloved ones. Some have asked, did Jesus have payas? The answer is absolutely he had payas. Why? Because he was a Torah-obedient Jew. 
He was able to take our sin in his own body on the tree because he lived a perfect life in obedience to the law. He was sinless. And because he lived a sinless life in obedience to the law for you and I, he was able to die in our place and release us from the guilt of having not kept the law. But Jesus absolutely had pay us. Now, they might not have looked like mine with the curls. We don't know exactly what they look like. There's all types of different traditions within Judaism of how the payas look. Some grow them straight, some in curls, etc. But no question, he had the side locks. Another I issue that I'd like to bring to your attention regarding what Jesus looked like is that he didn't look like this picture over here in the portrait of the Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci with fair skin. He didn't look like a Scandinavian. Beloved, he's from Israel. He had a Mediterranean complexion, an olive-colored skin. Again, a lot more like mine. And how tall was he? Well, according to experts on ancient skeletons in Israel, Jesus was possibly, probably, no taller than I was because the average Jewish male during the time of Jesus was 5'5". Five five. So I'm only 5'5 five five and a half. When people call me short, I like to say, well, I was created more in the likeness of Jesus. He looked, beloved, like a Jew because he is a Jew. Brown hair, brown eyes, olive skin, pay us. And he wore what you'll oftentimes see me wearing, I actually wear every day, my Talit Katan, which is a four-cornered garment that I wear underneath my shirt for the purpose of attaching the fringes or the seat seat. And the reason that we do this is to remind us to walk in Hashem's ways to walk in God's ways because it's a visual reminder that we're living for him, that we're under his authority. Let me read you the section of scripture in the Torah where the Lord told the children of Israel to wear the tzitzit or the fringes. I'm going to the book of uh, Numbers right now, chapter 15, verse 38. Speak to the sons of Israel and tell them they shall make for themselves tassels on the corners of their garments throughout their generations, and that they shall put on the tassel of each corner a cord of blue. It shall be a tassel for you to look at and remember all the commandments of the Lord so as to do them and not follow after your own heart and your own eyes and after what you played, the harlot, so that you may remember to do all my commandments and be holy to your God. Now, I'm not under the law, and neither are you under the law. But for me, this is just a visual reminder. So the guy in the video, Amalek, which is Esau, he said that Yeshua, Hamashiach, was more of a Mediterranean complexion like himself. Uh, he said an olive complexion. Now you got to stop right there. Hold on, wait a minute. Olives come in three colors, green, brown, and black. The guy in the video, he wasn't green, he wasn't brown, and he sure as hell wasn't black. So which one was Christ? He was the black one. Now, you, do you notice that they'll rather say that because they want you to zoom in on that area they now call the Middle East, okay? And go, yeah, he looks like that with no biblical reference. Notice they hate Revelation 1.15 where it said his feet like brown, uh, polished brass as if they burned in a furnace. I got some brass right here, right here, brothers and sisters. I'm going to burn it. You see what color it is, right? I'm just going to burn it. If the cameraman could just come in, I want you to come under it. Come underneath it. I'm going to burn it. I am doing polished brass. Polished, polished brass. Burn in a furnace. It burn in a furnace. He burn in a furnace. He burn, he burn, he burn in a furnace. Oh, oh, God, Lord Jesus, help me. What the hell is going on here? Yeah. So don't let these devils lie to y'all. Shalom. All right. <laughs> that thing's like comedy to me. But this, that, that's evidence that we're at war. They know that this gospel is going throughout the earth. And there's nothing they can do about it. Uh, let's go to Leviticus 19 and verse 27. Since he talked about the, how do you say it? Payos? Payos? Leviticus 19, 27. Watch this. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Because I know some of you, you hate your own people. And you know, I met some Nigerians like that of the Igbo following the example of the white man with tassels on their little hips, their little stupid prayer shawl. <clears throat> now, I remember, because somebody might bring this up. Well, didn't Bivens have that? Yes. And that was the growing process. That, those were the stages of us growing. Ezekiel 47. Read about it. 
uh, Leviticus 19, verse 27. But in this day and age, with all these Israelites out here, y'all can look at us. We don't wear the little tassels on the corner like that. When it says uh, fringes on the four corners, it means throughout the borders of your garments. That's all it means. Leviticus 19, 27. This dude, Amalek, read, You shall not round the corners of your heads. Neither shalt thou maul the corners of thy beard. He says, see, that's, that's why we wear our hair long on the side. Let me tell you something. The word uh, round, you shall not round the corners of your heads. And the word maul, neither shalt thou maul the corners of thy beard, is explained in chapter 21 and verse 5. It gives an easier breakdown. So you don't got to be a rocket science when it comes to Hebrew. Let's find a precept. Leviticus 21 verse 5. They shall not make baldness upon their head. So that's what it means when it's said, you should not run round the corners of your heads. It means they shall not make baldness upon their head. So then when it said, uh, back to 27, neither shall thou maw the corners of thy beard. That word maw confuses us. So back in 21 verse 5, it says, neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard nor make any more cuttings in their flesh. So that's, the Bible explains itself, all right? The next thing he said, which we dealt with already, was the olive complexion. Come on, olives come in three colors. Green, brown, and green, brown, and black. That demon wasn't green, he wasn't brown, and he sure as hell wasn't black. Uh, he also mentioned the titsits, the four corners, numbers 1538. And I remember talking to a, what an Igbo brother Listen, we're the Israelites. This e y'all gonna get rid of those names y'all calling yourselves. I'm gonna tell you that right now. You try to glorify your tribe Ebo above what the Bible says. Excuse me, excuse me. The Bible says Judah, Benjamin, Levi, Ephraim, Manasseh, Gad, uh, uh, Reuben, uh, Issachar, Naphtali, Zebulon. Okay, uh, 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 so forth and so on. Twelve tribes. It doesn't say Ebo. So stop it. St stop. Stop. Oh, uh, boy. Numbers 15. <laughs> Numbers 15 and verse 38. Let's read it. It says, let me get it, let me get it. All right. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. The borders of your garment means the hem of your garment. Not the, the belt hoop of your pant. That's not the border of your garment. Your belt hoop of your pant. I'm saying it because in Nigeria, I saw some of them doing that. And that's so wrong. So wrong. Uh, throughout the generations, on the borders of the gun, throughout the generations, and that they put upon the fringe of the border a ribband of blue. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them. And that ye seek not after your own heart, after your own eyes, after which ye used to go a whoring. Because coming into this truth, you really, if you're unclear and unsure, you might look at Amalek the so-called Jewish people, and say, well, how do they do it? How do they interpret these writings? You might start off like that. But in time, as you see your fellow brothers and sisters, you see us, you see archaeology books and how our ancestors wore the fringes, you would change and follow that example. That's what we're doing now. That's what we've been doing. And I've shown many, many videos. IUIC has many videos about that. Ah, the next thing that demon said, he said, for we are not under the law. See, that's a stumbling block. And you know why who said that? You so-called Ebos who are so-called awakened with your oral traditions. You, we are not under the law, but under grace, my brother. Shut, shut up. Let me give you some understanding of we are not under the law, but under grace. First, where did they get that from? Romans 6. Let's get it. Y'all bear with me. Romans chapter 6 and verse 15. You can read 14 too, but I'll read 15. Let's get to the point. What then? Shall we sin? What is sin? Sin is the breaking of God's law. First John 3 and 4. Let's read that first. What is sin? You know, for you, I'm not under grace. We're not under the law, but under grace. Shut up. Oh, God. Y'all just bear with me. First John chapter 3 and verse 4 reads, Whosoever committed sin, subject matter is sin, transgresses also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So how could you be a sinner? How could you be in sin and and not be under the law? Let's get some understanding on Romans 6.15, please. Romans 6.15 again. What then? Shall we sin, meaning shall we break the laws of God? Because we are not under the law, but under grace. 
God forbid. What does it mean? We are not under the law. We are not under the law. Hebrews 10, the apostle Paul explained what it means. Hebrews 10, we're going to, I'm getting to the, y'all can read the whole chapter, but I'm just getting to the nitty gritty. I'm just getting to the point. If I could only find Hebrews, somebody help me. <laughs> Bear with me. Hebrews 10, we're going to read verse 8 through 10. So what is the law we're not under? Hebrews 10 verse 8 reads, above when he said, mean above verses 1 through 7. So verse 8 again, above when he said, sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offerings for sin, thou wouldest not. Neither hadst thou pleasure therein, which are offered by the law, which are offered by the law, which are offered by the law. What's offered by the law? Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offerings for sin thou wouldest not, neither hadst thou not, neither hadst pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Verse nine. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, meaning the first covenant of burnt offerings, animal sacrifice, like it says in verse eight. Uh, then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, the first covenant of animal sacrifice, that he may establish the second. What is the second making reference to? The next verse explains the second. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all, meaning for all Israel. That's what it's talking about. So what law are we not under? The law of sacrifice, the law of burnt offerings. Okay, that's what it's talking about. So now, I hope you men and women understand that. Now, last week, I didn't get a chance to do a shout out. So I didn't get a chance to uh, do it. So what I'm going to do, this is from last week. I'm just going to read the names off. The first names I have to read is Di uh, Diane and her husband. Oh, I call them Obadiah and Diane from Canada. I must thank them for their donation because without that donation, Nigeria would have been very hard to uh, complete. Okay, so now thank you, brothers and sister Diane and o Diane and Obadiah of Canada, Ottawa, Canada. We thank you so much. All praise to the Lord. Uh, next, Angelica Maria M, Clorraine Saint, I think that's a G, Gail A, Cordesta R, Robin J, Robin J, Mr. Malik, two times. Thank you, Mr. Malik. Charles Lattimore, two times. Thank you, brother. Uh, Gwen R, Lorinda E, Charles Kemp. Jacqueline McQueen, Sean Sims, Dave and Katrina P, Lester M, Charlotte with Naomi Israel, thank you, Lazarus I, Sherry Overton, Elisheba I, Robert and Betty Griffith, uh, Diane, that's Obadiah again, Bark, uh, the Barclay, Barclay, yes, little, little David, Lamar G, uh, what is that? Darda D. Palalaya Israel. Thank you. I wrote your names down. See, I didn't forget. I wrote all the names down. I was in a rush last week, running around, not last week, week before, trying to prepare myself, trying to get ready. Uh, a <clears throat> few, few letters here. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to read all the letters together. There are the letters over there. See there? I'm going to be putting letters over there. Letters are here. So I'm going to put last week's, or week before last letters with this week's. And I'm going to... Read them. Okay. Royal I, I make this donation so that the brothers of Israel United in Christ can spread the gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Thank you, brother Sean Royale. Thank you so much. Also, what I want you to also take notice of, notice on Instagram, as we were in Nigeria, BBC put out another video on us saying, Israel United in Christ is a hate group. Ooh, hate. They just hate people. Well, who's, who, 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 did we ever burn a cross on somebody's lawn? Did we ever firebomb somebody's house? No. Then they tried to merge it with the unfortunate uh, death of our dearly beloved sister, Joy, as if we had all had something to do with it. I'm showing you how the devil operates. They are the devil. The SPLC in conjunction with BB, BBC. Evil as hell. Evil as hell. IUIC, to aid with the travel to the Booster Club, Most High in Christ Bless. Your Honor, thank you so much. All praises. All right. This one is from Mr. Malik. I got you, Mr. Malik. Shalom, Most High in Christ Bless. I hope this 
quick letter finds you all in good health and spirits. We truly appreciate what the bishops, deacons, captains, officers have done throughout the years. I hope this donation gift can help the Booster Club. Please help my family. Please keep my families in your prayers. Please keep my family in your prayers. We just lost my older brother. I truly appreciate it. Yes, brother. All praises. Let's send up a prayer for Mr. Malik, please, of the tribe of Benjamin from California. All right. Please continue waking up Israel. All praises to the Most High in the name of Jesus Christ, respectfully. All praises. Uh, let's go on. This one is from Brother Yavin, Israel. This is from week before last. Yes. Shalom, Bishop, Most High in Christ, bless you. All praises to the Most High. No one is putting in the work like IUIC. And we give all glory to the Lord for that. With you, brothers and sisters, constant help. Thank you. When I read my four chapters a day, that's right, I read four chapters a day. Within a year, you finish the whole Bible. When I read my four chapters a day, you must be consistent. I'm going over the basics because you handle the deep stuff for me. What hit me recently was there is not much discussion in the scriptures about Matthias, who replaced Judas Iscariot as the 12th disciple, correct? I know that had to be a lot of pressure taking that spot. Maybe we'll learn more about him when we reach the wilderness. Yes, we will. Uh, in the line of work you retired from, and I'm currently doing, there is much discussion about leadership and what makes a great leader. You are a great leader because your foundation is the Bible and you have paid attention to what the scriptures say. I don't know this for sure, but I think Romans 15.4 is one of your favorite scriptures because you read it a lot. LOL. Yes. All praise to the Lord. All of this country's military ac 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 academy, excuse me, all of this country's military academies are set up to develop leaders. You know what? There's a brother on Facebook who is a police officer and he'd rather teach than come under orders of IUIC, brothers and sisters, brothers who look like him. What I notice is that black men, particularly, it's not all of you, some of you, a small portion of you, you'll take orders from the white man. You'll take orders from the Asian man. But when it comes to your people in the Bible, you will not have it. You will not have it. So, brother, you know who you are. Shame on you. And, uh, hey, just you do what you're going to do. All right. So, again, all of this country's military academies are set up to develop leaders and they go in depth into what makes great leaders. But oftentimes what it produces is robots. Tactics and strategies can be taught. But insight, instincts and how to manage people cannot. In my humble opinion, what makes the best leaders is how they manage the people under them. Good point. How they motivate those people under them to perform whatever task. We've watched some leaders that people will run through a brick wall for and others where people will not do the bare minimum. Why? Because one leader has carried himself to be trusted and has shown he cares about the individual and one who has chosen just to be respected by his rank. I think you have managed to connect with many people and developed a trust that is invaluable. Keep up the good work. Stay Israel focused. Shalom. That's our brother, uh, Yavin Ben Israel. All praise to the Lord. Thank you for that. That's a good letter. I love that third paragraph, and I'm going to hold on to this one. I'm going to definitely hold on to that. I'll put it on the side. Next one. <clears throat> All right. Mm. P. Johnson. Uh... All right, this is written to Deacon Asaph. Thank you for taking my call. I was so excited. I'm a little, you know, the way women write. I know it's a woman. Men don't write all curvy like this. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm a little slow, but I want to join the Booster Club as we speak so it won't be the same. I think that's a mount all the time, but it will be something. I'm so excited to help and give my arms for my nation for as long as I got this job. And as for, and as long as I can, I will with the help of the Lord. Until I can meet everyone in person, God bless and God bless the work. That's this P. Johnson in Cleveland, Ohio. Thank you, sis. We appreciate you. We definitely appreciate you. This one is from Chiquita J. Thank you, leadership, for all that you do. Stay in the spirit, Chiquita. Is it Chiquita or Chiquita? I, I, I don't know. Yep, bear with me. G and K Brooks, all praise to the Most High for the prophets, our leadership. This one is from Sister Laura. 
All praise to the Most High. I'm, I'm sending you this money order for the Booster Club so you can spread to our people. Let them know we are the true Israelites. I love the videos. I watch them all day. I'm learning a lot. I repented. I wear my head wrap, skirts, and fringes. All praises, all praises. I'm in Seattle, Washington. I like to find a camp in Seattle. I know you have one in Tacoma. That's too far. I don't drive, Laura. All right, Sister Laura, you just hold on. Keep Set up the prayers that the Lord will bring in laborers from your area. And I'm going to definitely pray with you regarding that. D. Foster, thank you. Most high in Christ bless you and your family. That's D. Foster, thank you. This is from... Johnny, Jean, and Hezekiah. Shalom, Bishop. My family and I want to say thank you and I, I see for all you do. So thank you very much. Shalom. Constant prayers. Johnny, Jean, and Hezekiah. Thank you so much. All praises. All right. This one is from Sister Raina. Raina. Lorraine J. Lorino. Lorraine's J. Yeah. Shalom. Most high Christ blessed. This is dated February 12th, by the way. So almost time Christ. But included in this letter is a money order for, I'm not going to read the amount she put, for arm from Lorraine J. in Eastern Pennsylvania, a.k.a. Sister Raina. There is also a blank donation from a side business I have in which I sell homemade keychains and badge holders. I vow to the Most High to donate blank of each item he blessed my hands to create. May the donation be used wherever the need is. May my heart continue to be set in the Most High in Christ and my brothers and sisters in the truth and those who are waiting on the prophets to wake them up. Uh, may the Most High bless us the ready of this letter. The letter with strength, faith, and in health, wealth, spiritually, and wherever the zzz within your household. Thank you, sister. You know women in their handwriting. I thank you so much. Though. All praises to the Lord. Last but not least, again, this is our dear beloved brother Yavin. Shalom, Bishop. Most high in Christ bless you. All praise. I see you guys went back to the continent. Yes. Bishop, once Deacon Lava put that out about the meals, I knew I had to change up how I donated, and I'm glad I did, because when I saw Deacon Ithan's plate in Nigeria, <laughs> I said, damn, Deacon smashed his food. Whatever was on that plate didn't stand a chance. You're right. Bro, like on Saturday, we're out seven to eight hours a day. Seven to eight hours a day. It's exhausting. Okay. Uh, Deacon has plenty of room to grow too, weight-wise. Make, make me feel like I'm helping the mission. Always a lot going on. I'm glad you put out that video of the wickedness of Hollywood. I knew that. And you know, they deleted it off YouTube. They said, boop. So what we did, we're putting it on our website and on Facebook. Because they deleted it off YouTube. I knew that was coming because we can pull up many videos of the wickedness of the Super Bowl. But not too many of the wickedness of Hollywood. Evil communications corrupt good manners. It's talking about movies and TV as well, correct? Being out here close to the industry all my life. I have seen the evil of Hollywood up close. What they have always done is merge sports and media together because the same people deliver both to us. The movie studios own the TV networks who give us the NFL and thus the Super Bowl. So if we demonize the Super Bowl, we have to also demonize the Marvel and DC comic movies and all other movies that push evil. I didn't really watch the Super Bowl the last couple of years because I've learned to put sports in its place, but I've always hated comics. So I have no problem speaking out against that make-believe crap. That's funny. It was good to see Elder Kenai back. I can, I can still call him that because I'm on the outside right now. He's still an elder to me. I've learned from him his favorite subject to teach is the Maccabees. Keep up the good works. Stay focused. Stay Israel focused. Shalom. Thank you, Yavin. All praise to the Lord. I thank you so much. Now, what I want you to notice is that what in the clip I put about Hollywood's evil to destroy black people, the message, what they put secret messages in movies that make you emotionally and spiritually, mentally feel a certain way, a message of hatred towards your brother. And, and, and we'll watch a movie and don't understand where's this hate coming from, but it's there. That's from the movie and the videos and the, the music we've been listening to. Okay. Now, Officer Abaddon of Miami, Florida, he put this out. And I want to show y'all this right now. We're going to start circulating this. 
the Hebrews Journal. All praise, it's going to be a newspaper that Miami is going to put out. We deliver the news from our world. Avoid being kidnapped, for example. Uh, the Quest. You got a few things in here, which is really great. I'll just open it for y'all. Black and white. Now, I don't know if it's going to cost anything. It might be 50 cent. I don't know. It might be free. I don't know. I know they're going to uh, definitely push it around and around. So if y'all see it, please subscribe to it. I don't have the answers yet to it. Uh, in the back, uh, yeah, solutions, oppression of biblical, the very back. All right. So giving all praises to the most high. Thank you, Officer Abaddon, the brothers and sisters in Florida, you're doing a very good work. All praises, all praises. So brothers, sisters, I love you all. Stay focused, stay faithful, but most of all, stay in the spirit. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.